Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Trigonometry Primer, or how to utilize triangles in physics. All right, so let's start off with the most basic of definitions, uh, or the reason why we're doing this. Uh, why trigonometry? Well, here's the thing. In physics, we use a lot of vectors, aka values with a direction. And um, some vectors are described while using angles. Okay. Now, between you and me, angle vectors are tough to do very simple math with. And so what we do is we take those angles and we break it down into x vectors and y vectors because those are simple for our mathematical computations. For example, if we have a line like this, this is what we call a angled vector. If we're considering that point right there as the zero, uh, we don't want that. No, not at all. All right, so, so in physics, what we want to do is we want to take those angle vectors and we want to break it down into the x and the y components. And that's what we want, okay? All right, triangles, triangles, triangles. Whenever there is an angled vector, we will use trigonometry to determine the other two sides always. Now, sometimes you might not have all three sides, and so we need to figure it out. Or sometimes you'll have two sides and no angle. Sometimes you have to figure that out, and don't worry, I'll get you right through it. Now, first things first, whenever we do this, we must always be using right triangles or triangles with right angles. That's the very definition of a right triangle or the correct triangle. All right. So before we get into that, let's go into this idea of scalars and vectors. What is a scalar, you might ask? Um, scalars are not the things that you use to clean out fish. Uh, such a bad joke. Um, well, a scalar is something that has only a numerical description. Now, what do you think I mean by that? Think to yourself. How about this? Um, adding a direction does not make sense. And that's what I mean by a scalar. Still not making sense? How about an example? For example, if we have a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, and we add a direction to it. We have 20 degrees, 23 degrees Celsius west. The above example is a scalar because adding a direction to it does not make sense. However, when you do add a direction, 23 degrees Celsius west, it, it doesn't make any sense to us. And so we can consider temperature to be a scalar. Now, what are vectors you might ask? Well, vectors is a scalar with a direction. Okay, so um, for example, if we have a wind that is gusting and is traveling at 10 miles per hour to the west, that is a vector because it has a numerical component and a directional component. Okay, it requires two things. All right. So now here's the thing. Sometimes we can turn a scalar into a vector. How, you might ask? Well, all we have to do is add a direction. For example, if we have something that is, 10, that is going 10 kilometers per hour, we can say, well, how about 10 kilometers per hour north? And when we add the north component or the directional component, we turn that scalar into a vector. Cool. Now let's go uh, into parts of a triangle. Now the whole reason behind scalars and vectors is because um, we can only use our trigonometry stuff using vectors. Okay? Now everything is in reference to theta. Uh, theta is that little symbol you see right there. Uh, is it, it is a Greek letter. Okay? That is the lowercase theta. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle. We consider the opposite side, or the side that is furthest away from the theta, to be the opposite side. And we consider the uh, adjacent side to be the side that is actually touching theta. Okay? Now, uh, let's say we want to use our mathematical function of sine. Okay? Uh, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we have sine of something, we want to use opposite over hypotenuse. Now the cool thing is, like, it's, it's kind of like a puzzle. If you have two out of the three, two out of the three components of sine, whether it's theta, opposite, or the hypotenuse, any two out of the three, you can find the third missing one. So um, an easy way to remember this, opposite over hypotenuse, is the SO, S-O-H. You might have heard that before. Okay. So what you need for in order to use the function sine, we need the opposite and the hypotenuse. Okay. Now let's say we don't have the opposite and the hypotenuse. Let's say we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Then we use cosine or ka. Okay. And so what we would have numerically is the hypotenuse and the adjacent, or the angle, of course. Okay. And of course, the last one, toa or sokatoa, um, is anything that is opposite and adjacent. So you would either have the angle theta. You would either have the opposite side or you would have the adjacent side. Ooh, I was about to say hypotenuse. That's a close one. 
All right, so with all that in our minds, uh, let's get a example going on. Let's say we have a bird, and it flew 23 meters at 25 degrees northwest from its origin. Um, and I want you to do this with me by determining the x and y distance that is covered. So let's take a look at this. We have the, we have the angle, and we have the hypotenuse, and we want um, both the x and the y. So let's do the y side first, okay? Now, i got to think to myself, is that the opposite side? the adjacent side, or the hypotenuse. Well, I'll give you the hypotenuse, so it's not that. And we take a look at our angle, and we see that the triangle side is opposite of that angle. Therefore, that is the opposite side. Okay, so we have opposite, we have hypotenuse, and we have the angle. Okay, so let's see. Is it so, ka, or towa? Opposite hypotenuse. Oh, oh, oh. So, so, we use sine. Okay, so sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And then I want you to always write out the original equation first, okay? The equation without anything filled in. From there, the next line, we can fill things in. Sine of 25 is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse, which in this case is 23 meters. Now, you should be using a calculator to do this, okay? Now, I'm going to get rid of the 23 meters in the denominator from the right-hand side by multiplying the entire thing with 23 meters. So 23 meters times sine of 25 gives us 9.72. Okay. Now, if you got anything different, make sure you're in degree mode and not radian mode. We're going we're gonna to always be working in degree mode. Right. Now, in order to find the x component, let's think about it. That is adjacent, adjacent, so ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and we have the hypotenuse, so ka, right? So ka, we use cosine. All right, once again, start off with the original equation, fill things in, multiply both sides by 23, and do the math, do the math, make sure you're in degree mode, and hopefully you get 20.85, all right? Now, a simple way of doing a little check is by using Pythagorean theorem, okay? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, or in numerical sense, you get 9.72 squared added to 20.85 squared, and it should equal 23 squared, okay? All right, now here's something different. Uh, let's say I don't give you the angle, right? Uh, instead, I give you the y component and the x component. And I want you to find the angle. What you have to do is, remember, um, you have opposite and adjacent. So owa, 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 toa, right? Plug it in. And then that little function right there is the inverse tangent sign. So basically, it like topsy-turvies the tangent in order for you to find the angle that it should be. And for these calculators, what you have to do is you have to push second and then tangent then it should get it for you. That should be the inverse tangent. Now, all calculators are different, so try to figure out the calculator that you're using, how to get this, because it's very important, all right? Now, let's do a recap. Uh, scalars are numerical values and numerical values alone. If you add a direction, don't make sense. Vectors are scalars, but with direction, okay? It makes sense if you have a direction. Uh, some scalars can turn into vectors. How? By adding a direction. Um, Use right triangles at all times. Now, you might be like, oh, Mr. Lee, I'm like a isosceles triangles kind of guy. I only work with acute angles. And I'm like, sorry, man. It, like, you and your acute angles, you can spend your own time after school. But in here, it's right triangles only. Okay. And most importantly, the purpose of this entire video, you need to break your angled components or angled vectors into components, x and y components. It makes our lives a lot easier. Okay. And always, always, always remember, so, ka, to, wa, so, ka, to, wa.